Okay, I'm going to talk about yoga, and I'm going to talk about how it has come into its own in the past 10 or 15 years, really. I used to uh, be the same kind of doctor I am now, physical medicine and rehab. I would use yoga in my practice, and I would have to sort of apologize for it. I'd say to people, this is a yoga-like maneuver. And that, at about 2008 or so, that changed. And people would say, I don't want medicines. Don't give me any shots. I'm not interested in surgery. Forget physical therapy. I want yoga. And that's why they came. And then were I to say this is a yoga-like procedure, they would have been a little disappointed. They wanted yoga. And in general, uh, when I would give talks in the early 2000s, I would recommend something on the basis of anatomy or physiology or something like that. And people would say, but and I would say, you should really do this pose this way. And people would say to me, no, it's not the way my guru has taught me to do it. It's not the way I've learned. And I would address them and say, well, if you're going to your guru because you want a daddy or a mommy, stick with the guru. But if you're going with the guru because you think the guru is telling you the truth, then you should probably pay attention to the truth. And empirical studies are really important for that. And in general, in the last 10 years, I'd say, there has been a, 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 a fantastic migration of trust away from the authority, whoever it happens to be, and towards empirical verification, the facts, the anatomy, the electrophysiology, the imaging studies, the biochemistry. And that has been possibly responsible or anyway uh, coincident with the movement of people towards yoga for serious medical problems. Now today we're going to talk about scoliosis, rotator cuff syndrome, and osteoporosis. Those are the three big topics we're going to cover where I feel comfortable that there is enough evidence to say that yoga has really been quite successful in alleviating the, the pain and the misery and, I must say, the establishment-induced grief that uh, comes with the, the conditions. Now, if you really want to see what's happened, this only goes up to 2012, but it makes fairly apparent the exponential growth of studies into yoga uh, more than anything else. This is more, this is just yoga, but were we to include acupuncture and some of the more uh, esoteric biochemical inter uh, interventions that are now common and certainly considered alternative, uh, the, the columns would be even higher here. Now, what we're going to talk about, let's just start with scoliosis. Given that we know that there, we're propelled by an increasingly uh, intense body of evidence, and they say, by the way, that 90% of all the scientists who have ever worked in the history of the world as we know it are working now. So there's a corresponding movement here. And when it comes to tensegrity, this is a concept that comes from the architect Buckminster Fuller. He invented the geodesic dome, as you probably have heard. And what is it? It's a structure that is held together by tension between its parts. This squishy toy has little rubber strands that hold it. In the human body, they're not rubber, they're muscle. But that's clearly what holds us together, too, uh, in the various things we do. If you consider is another integrity structure, the solar system. No nuts and bolts, no glue, no mortar. How is it held together? Well, as the universe is expanding, our cute little solar system seems to be holding its own because of the invisible tether of gravity. And just to come back to the geodesic dome, consider a woman in gestation. She is making a geodesic dome with her stomach because the pressures inside are withstood by the tensions of the skin and the muscular fibers that protect this little grandchild of mine pretty well. If you look at a tower, you go on a, uh, an urban a rural drive, leave our urban surroundings behind and go out in the country, you see there's an antenna sticking straight up in the air. What is holding it up is, is the tension of cables pulling down equally on both sides. Well, we're the same way. We don't have a little hook that's holding us up. Rather, it's symmetrical pressures, left and right, front and back, that keep us vertical. 
Uh, I have a picture here of the neck, and you can see the neck almost resembles the Eiffel Tower. It's so symmetrical, and uh, they're so smooth, those guy wires, those cables that hold us up and keep us doing what we're doing. In our next case, there's also great flexibility in order to direct the, our organs of sense. Now, if you consider scoliosis, because that's where we're going, that's where the, the cables are stronger on one side than the other, tilting the tower or the spine, as the case may be, over to the side of the stronger cables. Now, what happens in the case of a human being is that we're not just a tower, we have ribs. And as we sway over to one side, the ribs on the, on the opposite side splay out like the spokes of a wheel. And they separate the soft tissues and the, uh, they, they spread apart the soft tissues, the muscles, the skin, everything on the, on the side that's being stretched. And then those ribs migrate back into the space created by their separation. So there's a side that's really big uh, and a side that's really small. Here we have it. I've put little brackets that look sort of like staples on each side. And you can see on the squeeze side, the two ribs are really pretty close together. On the other side, they're maybe four or five times further apart. And those, that lump that you see in people with scoliosis then looks big and strong and powerful. But actually, nothing could be further from the truth. The strong side is the hollow side. It's the side where the muscles are tight and hardly evident. They're pulling the spine down. And the side that's blown up and looks big, skin stretched tight as a drum, is indeed like a drum, hollow and not strong. For hundreds of years, people thought that's what was going on with scoliosis, paradoxically, like a, 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 like a, 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 a one of those aerials that you see in the country, paradoxically held up by fibers pulling down like a tent pole, same thing. They thought it was so paradoxical. It's not paradoxical at all. It just isn't common sense and it isn't true. In fact, the hollow side is the strong side. And here I'm going to show you this as a, an actor who was very upset that she had this scoliosis. And you can see the hollow side. You can see a little bit of the yellow wall behind her right side. You see that? That's where it's hollow. You can see it. So it's the other side that looks big and important, but that's the side that's actually the weaker side. I did an MRI of her, and you can see, I'm not going to show you a whole lot of pictures of skeletons, don't worry, but you can see how the muscle, that's the iliopsoas muscle, is stretched on her left side, but contracted strongly, almost invisibly contracted on the right. Well, that's what scoliosis is. And here she is doing the pose that we have found that you do for as long as you can every day with the convex side down, the bulgy side down. And we find that people really do get better doing that. Here, here is she over the course of, no, this is another woman actually, over the course of, let's see, June is the sixth month, November is the 11th, five months, she got 25% better. This is an actual case. Now, this is not the only kind of curve there is. There's also a complex curve where this is called a C curve because it obviously resembles a C. But there's also an S curve or an inverted S curve. And those curves, uh, we treat the same way, but in slightly more complexly, and we've developed new things for them. But I have yet to unfurl to you our really hidden, powerful armamentarium, which is the oldest and most reliable medical uh, resource ever found, the mother. Here's a young girl. Most of the people that have scoliosis are 11, 13 years of age, discovered by the school nurse or somebody in gym class, once in a while the pediatrician. And the mother has to get the daughter to do these poses every day. That is sometimes is harder than you think. Usually it's easier than you think because the daughter wants to do them. Nine out of 10 of these cases are young girls. Uh, consider for a minute the plight of the young girl. Here she is, she's 12 years old, her body is changing, she wants to see what she looks like. Her uh, intimate impulses are gathering, she wants to hold hands with her boyfriend, she wants to go for walks in, in the park or go upstairs in the balcony in the movie on the matinee. Uh, and perhaps most important, her peer group affiliations are changing from her parents, vertical, to her horizontal friends. And there's mom and dad saying, darling, for your own good, I'm going to put you in a brace. I'm going to send you to surgery. 
I'm going to have you do one of these methods, the Schroth method, the clear method. There are many of them. Taking literally hours of this little child's day, and the parents too. And it's for your own good, darling. We're afraid that you're going to become mutilated by this condition. It's going to really make you into somebody, an ugly duckling. So they give her this brace, or they give her this. Well, I told this to a woman that I was trying to get to do the pose, a middle-aged woman about uh, oh, months ago, and she started to cry. I said to her, I'm so very sorry, I didn't mean to make her cry. Was it something I said? And she said, no, you just described me. How did I describe her? Well, I said, give, them, give her the brace. She can't see what her body looks like. She's no fun dancing. She can't go swimming. She can't play volleyball. She, a lot of things she can't do upstairs in the movie is no fun. When it comes to peer group affiliations, this young girl sometimes does fine, sometimes actually gets excluded from the group. She becomes ostracized because of the brace. I mean, a little too much information here. I had a girlfriend when I was 11, Phyllis, and Phyllis wore a brace. She got one because her mom and dad gave it to her. And she, I watched her drift out of our group. And she happened to go to the same high school I went to, and she, she never re-entered. And when I told this story to this middle-aged woman, she, that's when she started to cry. And she said, that's me. So I just thought I'd give you a picture of the brace. Here's the brace. So one of the ones they wear. This is like a Milwaukee brace. They, they don't wear it that long, only 23 hours a day. Now here, if they, they usually below 25 degrees of scoliosis of curve. They don't do anything. 25 to 45 degrees, they put these braces on. And they say with a great wisdom, these won't make you any better. They'll just possibly keep you from getting any worse. Because, to put it in a few words, they don't work. There's one, the spine core brace, the Italian brace, that is better than a lot. And I've actually seen it work a couple of times. I incidentally, I've seen the Schroth method work a couple of times. Our method works almost every time. And it takes a minute a day, and it doesn't cost anything. And the girl can still dance, and she can look at her body, and she can do whatever she wants with her peers. Um, above 45 degrees, they say the braces are not really the right thing. It's time for surgery. And the surgery, the girls lie down on their stomachs maybe for four or five months afterwards. Surgery is usually, it's good. It really does improve them. But the question is, is it necessary? Um, I want to say uh, there are German and uh, Polish studies showing that when a young girl puts on a brace or has surgery, her self-esteem plummets. It's not arguable. It really does. When they do the yoga that I'm about to, that I've told you about, and I'm about to show you the assessment, they, uh, nobody knows. And besides, yoga is sort of cool. So I, I give you that. And here's our first little study that uh, we published a couple of years ago. And these are individual cases. A couple of them didn't get better. You'll see some lines rising. But in general, almost everybody got better. And uh, You'll see this dark red line here. Those are the, that's the, the average of all of them. Um, I, I, we did a bigger study. That was only like 20 people or something. It was like a pilot study. But here's the next study we did, which I just sent in for publication. It has not been accepted yet for publication. There are two kinds of sco scoliosis, I should explain. One is called adolescent idi idiopathic scoliosis. You know what idiopathic means? It's the, us doctors concealing our ignorance. We don't know what it comes from, so we say idiopathic, meaning it comes from that person, him or herself. And the others are degenerative. These are people that don't get it till they're in their 40s or so, 50s, 60s. And sometimes it's related to osteoarthritis or uh, conditions such as a fracture. So you can see that the adolescent idiopathic, this is in eight months, they got one third better. So if their curves were 50 degrees, all of a sudden uh, their curves are 35 degrees. So they might have needed surgery before, now they might need a brace, and if they go on with this, they probably won't. The degenerative got about two-thirds as much better as the kids. The kids get better. Um, uh, I'll show you some cases I had later, but I'm not going to give you not going to give you skeletons. But the, perhaps the most striking thing is the difference between those that did the pose. This is called vasistasana, vasista. 
who I believe was the grand, in, in Indian mythology, is the grandfather of the sun, a pretty illustrious lineage. Uh, these are the people that did the pose, the big red column. These are the people that didn't. N not much of a comparison. So talking about affordable health care, the scoliosis surgeries alone cost the government $7 billion, $100 million, if you average out what the real costs are, whereas the yoga for one visit costs $75. That's less. And the yoga, you only have to go once really to see people. I do it by Skype sometimes. I can show it. The mom has to be there to feel the muscles in the back to be sure things are going right. Mom or a friend or a husband in the case of degenerative scoliosis. And they do it on their own. Once in a while, I must see them again in six months. I like to get another x-ray in six months. I mean, there are some costs attended, and I put that in here to make it really fair. It's two million, you know, for the same number of people, it's 2,850,000. There are 38,000 surgeries a year in the United States. The, the savings are, are, if you look at that number, the savings are about 250,000 percent. So it's a big savings. I mean, never mind the grief the aggravation, the time loss, the parents and the children doing these crazy, these really very elaborate maneuvers, you know, with all kinds of contraptions. Um, but that's not the only use. I want to say there are children who have special conditions that give them scoliosis and that cannot have surgery. This is one young boy uh, has osteogenesis imperfecta. It's an illness where he his bones are soft. They're sort of like, like stale bread. They might feel hard on the outside. They're not hard. And if you were to put screws into them, like the surgery I showed you a minute ago, they'd pull right out. And of course, these children, as nature would have it, these children are very prey to scoliosis. There are different kinds of osteogenesis imperfecta, but most of them have this as a major concomitant. This young boy is a straight-A student. He wants to be a doctor. He is, I think he had an 88-degree curve. In his, he had an S-curve, 88 degrees and 60 degrees. And when he came back, uh, four months later, he had improved down to 50 degrees and 35 degrees. My boy from Western Pennsylvania, mother brought him up a couple of times. Um, we also looked... Uh, in MRI at this Vasistasana, here is a brave young yogi who was able to go into the MRI. And because it's, it's, it's a different kind of MRI called a phonar, plates about 18 inches apart. So you can do some yoga poses in there. You, you can't do the uh, 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 scorpion in there. You can, <laughs> some you just won't be able to do. You can't do uh, the, the butterfly, the firefly, but there are some you can do. And you could do Vasistasana the pose that I've shown you already. And when you look at someone doing Tadasana, just standing there versus doing Vasisasana, you'd be amazed to see. I was stunned to see that Vasisasana, at least for the time you're doing the pose, utterly corrected this condition called spondylolisthesis, where you can see over here the spine is slid forward. L3 is slid way forward on L4. Well, that's not happening here. It's the same person. I mean, you can see the same characteristics in all the vertebrae. Same thing. But uh, what happened to it? Well, the power of the muscles and the strength of them has a straightening influence, not just left to right, but also front to back. 